Welcome back to That Handicapping Show. I'm Claire Novak here with Tom Lamara. And Tom, it is never too early to talk about the Kentucky Derby Trail. <laughs> and this is a race that kicks off the Kentucky Derby Trail, even though these are still two-year-olds. We're talking about the Delta Jackpot. A million dollars, four juveniles going a mile and a sixteenth at Delta Downs. And the winner of this race will get $600,000 and 10 points on the road to the Kentucky Derby. So here we are. And uh, do you think this race, you know, it's so early in the season now. I mean, are we, does this race even really factor into the three-year-old scene? Uh, my guess is it probably won't. Mm. But that's beside the point because it's $1 million. And uh, it's actually proven to be a really popular race. Mm -hmm. uh, horses a lot of from shippers. California, yeah. horses from the Northeast, horses from the Midwest. And it's, it's produced some really nice horses, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, with the purse, um, I guess it's, you know, Fair game. worthy of having some points, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. All righty. Well, we're going to take a look. Uh, interesting field here, and like you mentioned, some shippers. Uh, one horse that I'm going to take a look at, actually, let's just go from the rail. Traditionally, well, at least <laughs> last year, this race was won by speed. Is this, is, is this race typically won by speed at Delta? Is Delta a speed favoring? I think dollar? it's a pretty fair track, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't watch the races there every night, but when I do, it looks like a fair track. I think if you're a really good speed horse and um, the pace is uncontested, sure, you could wire the field, but I've seen horses make some early rallies and uh, come from far back in the stretch. Um, remember, it is a bull ring. It's a three quarter mile track. Um, so the mile and the 16th will start way up the chute. Mm -hmm. And there's a very long run to the first turn. And because of that, I don't think that, that the post position really makes that big a difference. All righty, well, going from the rail, there's a horse in there called Prime Engine, and this is a Jerry Hollendorf for Trini, but he has been racing in his two starts at Emerald Downs. The reason I mention him is because he was quite impressive in his win last time out, which was in a stakes there, and he set the pace the whole way. By the time he hit the head of the stretch, he was eight lengths in front of the rest of the field, and he did finish, according to the notes here, ridden out, winning by five and a half lengths, but clearly didn't have uh, very much work to do to put away that field. I guess the question would be whether the type that he was facing up there is the same as here. And there are some horses in here with more impressive credentials, but he is one that I'm going to take a look at just because he intrigues me. He's undefeated in two starts. Yeah, uh, Russell Bays is named to ride Prime Engine uh, for Hollendorfer. Uh, the horse had been trained by Mike Puick. Mm -hmm while he was in Washington. However, the owner um, regularly uh, uses Hollendorfer as a trainer. So mm -hmm. uh, real nice works at Santa Anita. Um, this is the kind of horse that you would want to try in this million dollar spot because he does have speed. Uh, he's one at the distance, which I think is important. Right, that was a mile and And you know, I don't know if he's a need, need the lead type horse to win. If not, He's got the rail. If he breaks well, he could be primed right off of it. And I did put him in my top three because of that. All right. And another horse that is in both of our top three is the winner of the local prep here, Golden Actor. And this is a horse who broke his maiden by two and a half, came back and won the prep for this race um, by a very nice four and a half lengths. So yes, he did. what do you like about him? Actually, he's my top pick in this race. Um, I really like horses who have raced here on this particular surface in the past. And uh, of course, he won the Jean Lafitte Futurity rather impressively, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that was a mile, it was a 16th shorter, but still it was around two turns there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he sat off the pace, uh, grabbed the lead, and really just won easily. Uh, the other thing that I like about him is, is that he's been on the lead through moderate fractions. He's come from off the pace through moderate fractions. I think the fractions in this race will actually be pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And in, in his debut, seven furlongs in South Florida, uh, was a rapid early pace. They slowed down a little bit toward the end, and he went from 10th to almost break his maiden in his first start in, in a maiden special weight. So I think, yeah. you know, I think this is a horse that can probably um, you know, run well from any part of the racetrack, no matter what the fractions are, and I really like that. Class will find out, but he is by Curlin out of a theatrical mare, so he's kind of interesting. 
our horse. All right, and for our last uh, horse, each of us in our top three, we're going to kind of go yes. separate ways, even though we've agreed on two of them. I'm going to take a look at Ocho, 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 and this is a horse trained by Jim Cassidy, another one of the California shippers. He had a very interesting uh, little path to victory. He's undefeated in two starts. He broke his maiden going five and a half furlongs by length, came back and ran in an off-the-turf edition of the Juvenile Turf Sprint at Santa Anita and won that very nicely five and three-quarter lengths under Joe Talamo. So he gets the services of Hall of Fame trainer Mike, or Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith coming in to ride and this is a street sense colt. Um, so I don't I think he's a little bit interested. Uh, yeah, I don't think the mile of 16th is really a question with this horse. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, he's he actually ran extremely fast in his last race, which was on Breeders' Cup Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was an early race. Actually, it might have been the first race. I think it was. Race. Yeah, sure. they took the races off the um, turf just but, to kind of... You know, he was inside speed, uh, and at that particular point... Uh, in the program, which had just started, um, it was very, very good. Now, granted, he did look like kind of a standout in that race, mm -hmm. but I do think that uh, he was kind of aided by speed. And um, I don't know, it's, it's, you know, he rated in his first start. Um, I think he's got a good shot. I think he'll draw a lot of action, maybe more than I'm willing to, uh, to take in this race. So All right, so I threw in Mr. Shot. Z, oh, uh, dropping Z. out of the Breeders' Cup shot. Juvenile. Uh, Race with blinkers favorite. on, uh, I, I'm not sure what it did, but um, he did, uh, he was very close to a very fast pace in that race. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that uh, that in that particular race, the front end just fell apart because the horses were going too fast. It was contentious. Texas Red went from last to first. Mr. Z held on pretty well for fifth. Mm -hmm. I can see him absolutely hitting the board, I could see him winning the race. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that Paco Lopez is riding him because mm -hmm. he's a good jockey to find early position. This is a horse who has not won since breaking his maiden first out for D. Wayne Lucas. However, he's made a lot of money since. He then. has made money. He was <laughs> second in the Sanford by neck. He was second in the Saratoga Special. He was second in the Breeders' Futurity and then had those fits in the Iroquois yeah. and the Breeders' He's Cup Juvenile. One yes. other horse that we should mention in here is Conquest Tsunami, who kind of has a similar um, history as far as the Breeders' Futurity ran sixth in that race, but came back to take the street sense at Churchill Downs and prior to the Breeders' Futurity was undefeated up in Canada and had done quite well there and won a pair of stakes for trainer Mark Cassie. So he might be one that you want to take a look at um, by Stormy Atlantic. Yeah. Good betting race here. So. Very good betting race, and uh, as always, you know, uh, well, I did want to mention uh, Mr. Z for Lucas. He also has the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies winner, Take Charge Brandy, in the Delta Prince. Yes, that's a grade three at one mile. Uh, we all know what happened in the Breeders' Cup, well, most of us do, I'm sure, in mm -hmm. the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, wire to wire win at 61 to one. Crazy. Uh, you know what? This is a pretty nice group here and uh, I think maybe something weird is going to happen in this race like it happened in the juvenile Phillies. How did I not bet that horse? I don't know. I, I didn't, totally threw her I didn't out. I, I didn't bet. totally threw her out. We I know people bet. who had her and yes. had her quite, yes, we quite, did. quite well. We did. Well, we good always, for them. Yeah, good, good for, them. for them. Exactly. I wish that I could be them sometimes, <laughs> but oh well. I'll keep plugging away on that handicapping show. And uh, as always, we want to thank Briss for the PPs. And we will keep you posted on all of the weekend action at bloodhorse.com. Thanks for watching the handicapping show.